Welcome, Diana. Welcome, everybody. It's such a pleasure to see you here today again. Uh, I am so glad to be able to talk to you today, uh, Diana, and share who you are with the viewers. Uh, most of my world is surrounded by blockchain, space, technology, innovations. And I know you from a different world of mine. I know you from the world of health, conscious approach uh, through, you know, David Johnston and, you know, we know Michelle Norris. I interviewed her yesterday. So really kind of a holistic, expanded consciousness, expanded health, expanded being, presence, love, care, uh, all that. That's, you know, that's the world I know you from. And you are representation of all of it. You are, you're a doctor, uh, right? You went and did the oriental medicine am i correct yes and you absolutely. practice the things i still need to come and brave the, the needles right and everybody that knows you always say just such a beautiful things and your energy is so warm and so beautiful and so healing and you care about the world and you care about the people and you have this like huge love and connection to the universe. And so it's such an honor to be here with you, Diana. And thank you guys for, you know, watching. I know you will carry out a lot of awesome things that Diana has for you because every conversation is awesome. First question I want to ask is, why did you start doing this, right? Because it isn't an alternative past. And maybe up until now, maybe have been even past to where people maybe label and judge in a way to where, um, you know, it, it would be a negative labeling, right? Like wanting to heal people, why do you choose going from traditional medical approach to this new different, well, not new, old, <laughs> very old, right, uh, approach of healing, yeah, I really love that question. So part of the way I joke about what I do is I always tell people I'm the perfect blend of science and woo. So I actually come from a Western medical background. It started about 17 years ago. I grew up in the ballet industry. I was really unhealthy. I had multiple eating disorders, was not taking very good care of myself. And so it started with that inner journey, of course, I'm like, well, what can I do to, to be healthy, you know, to take care of my body and to really continue my practice and my passion. And so I started looking into nutrition, obviously, like let's get healthy from the inside out, like Doritos and Dr. Pepper, the breakfast of champions in college, that does not work anymore. And how can I really revitalize my vitality from nutritional components? And I was a little bit of the odd one out in that undergrad program because I started reading all these books about how mixing different foods can cause problems and about leaky gut. I mean, we're talking like 20 years ago about these digestive issues. And I'm like, raise my hand. I will never forget, raise my hand in nutrition class and said, well, what about trophology, which is the mixture of foods and the way they work in the body? I said, when you mix a potato with meats, the digestive juices they need are an acid and an alkaline to digest them. And you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that al acids and alkalines create a neutral state. And so I'm asking these questions about, well, do you think that these digestive juices could neutralize each other and cause issues? And I kind of got shut down pretty quickly. I was basically that weird meat and potatoes girl. Right. Like, what do you talk? We don't talk about these things, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Seriously, too far out of the box for them, even though it's completely scientifically sound, makes a ton of sense. And so I kind of got a little slighted and I said, well, obviously I need to go to the top, right? If I'm going to get kind of like shut down over here in this nutritional realm, I'll become a doctor, change it from the inside out, work my way up. I wanted to be a heart surgeon, save the world by healing hearts. And I got into my pre-med program. I was up at Western Washington University and they're a great feeder school for UW, the University of Washington, which is then a gateway into Stanford and Harvard and Yale and those kinds of programs. I'm like, you know, Diana from the block kind of story. Grew up really poor in New Mexico, work my way up, become a doctor, go to an Ivy League school and then, you know, help heal the world. I realized pretty quickly that 
that was not the path to enlightenment for me and that the system was so broken. I mean, I was a couple weeks into my cardiothoracic rehab internship at a hospital up in the Northwest. And, you know, people were coming in and they'd be like throwing a McDonald's cup out on the way in or smelling like booze and cigarettes. And I kind of start asking questions to my, my supervisors and go, you know, can I talk to them about this? Can, can I mention like increasing water intake, more fruits and vegetables, drinking tea, things like that, helping people get off of coffee? And they kind of looked at me and said, that's not your job. There's extracurricular classes they can take if they want. Leave it up to the system and, you know, don't be surprised if they come back. And it was more or less like the same or with the same McDonald's bag. Yes, with the same McDonald's bag, exactly. Months later with no lifestyle changes. And so it's kind of like, you know, get them on the machine, take their vitals, make sure they're taking their prescriptions. And I'd go home crying and I'd call my mom on the phone like, I don't think this is how I'm going to change the world. And um, the more and more I asked, the more it became clear that they were kind of like, well, you know, most people come back second, third, fourth stints in their hearts double coronary artery bypass surgeries, the mortality rates were just astonishing. And I, it was so clear, this is not it. So I looked into everything. I really did. I am such a researcher. I looked into Ayurveda, chiropractic, physical therapy, naturopathy, osteopathy. And then I found Chinese medicine, which had a really cool intermingling in my childhood in my life. And it made sense. Like the more I learned about acupuncture and Chinese medicine, the more it became comprehensive. I mean, it really is a complete system. It's been around for 5,000 years for a reason. And it really gets to the root of the issues instead of just slapping a Band-Aid on things, giving people pharmaceuticals, stitching them up, sending them home. I still believe in the power of Western medicine. We need it. It's essential but it's not always getting to the root of the imbalances. It's not always finding out why the headaches are there. Why do we have insomnia? How come the digestive system is all torn up? You know, let's really get to the root of it. And so, because it takes so much into account with our thoughts, with our environment, with the things that we eat, with the colors we surround ourselves, the more and more I learned, it was just like light bulb after light bulb. So many epiphanies that it was obvious that this was the path and the route for me. That's amazing. I love what you're saying. It really is true that, you know, and I, that there's this approach of life for people that is kind of this never ending cycle and almost acceptance that, you know, oh, I'm sick. So now I'm sick. I've had a heart attack. I might have another heart attack. I have like, you know, I have a pre-cancer thing and whatever. And and, the, and just kind of a submission and acceptance that it is normal and it's something that comes with age. And, you, you know, I think that it's false and I know it's false. We finally have science to be able to show that, which I really love, you know, that we, we have the technology now. We have a science. We have ability to analyze data, to put it together. We can, we understand so much more, you know, the, the, the preventative medicine is it's starting to take on quite a bit, which I'm sure you know a lot, right? And preventative medicine is exactly that, is, is healing your body and not accepting that, you know, you have to go through, through all these problems. Um, you know, I also think that it's so awesome that you, it was related to your childhood, it was a passion for yourself, and Michelle yesterday said that, you know, do something, it, it is through her own experience, she realized her passion too, and you're realizing your passion through that experience and healing people and allowing people. So if a person wants to make a change, right, I think that one of the, I'll get to my question. I think one of the things to realize, and I want to make sure you viewers understand that very clearly, when we talk about Western medicine being broken, we don't mean that it's a bad thing. It's not a boogeyman. This is not a, it is a great thing what we've been able to achieve with science and modern Western uh, medicine. It's just a one aspect of kind of life. We still, it's still very important to be able to, in a critical situation, to be able to do the things that the Western medicine can do, which is fix critical situation, right? Like, really critical situation but 
we can implement the knowledge that we have with understanding of how our body works, with knowledge, what natural things we have, and add it to the Western medicine. Now, it is up to you because you can use traditional medicine, but start implementing the other preventative ways. And we'll talk about these ways uh, to balance it because you're just basically delaying by, by investing your time in preventative ways in healing your body and your mind. You're just expending the time. And then you can use the Western medicine when you have a critical situation and just make it be like when you were 103 years old and not like 50. Okay, come on, people, wake up. Anyhow, I start my rant. I stop my rant. My question to you is, what would be a comfortable steps to that, that would make a big effect, right? And people say food, but food is one of the hardest things for people to break. So what is that that can take a bigger shift to, to feel that, that nurturing in the body? Yeah. You know, I really want to speak to something that you said that I do absolutely believe the wave of the future of medicine, the new medicine of today and tomorrow is integration. It really is because when we come together, just like with most things, the more effort we put into it, the more ideas we have, the more approaches and techniques, the better, right? So there's a lot of simple things you can do. And you really said it, Irina, like food is a big deal. I mean, I have people look at me cross-eyed when I'm like, so let's talk about dairy and gluten. And it's confronting, oh. right? Like I love cheese. I'm Italian. When I got told I was good, good for you, grains are good for you. You know, it's like, uh, Right, right. And I mean, I remember like crying in my naturopath's arm. I'm like, I eat bread with pasta on it and I eat whole grain bread and all the good stuff. And she says, well, yeah, but the problem is in the world today, the way we process the grain actually removes the germ from the grain. It's, it's the casing from the grain that gives us the enzymes to digest it. So I get it. It can be so confronting to go, there's so many options. There's so many approaches. There's so much information out there what are the easiest things to implement for what I call sacred self-care? And one of the most incredible things to just take a moment to look at are the basics. I always come back to the basics. Food, of course, is a more complex basic, but how much water are you drinking? I know we hear it every day, drink more water, drink more water, and we're all trying to. And then on top of that, are you drinking quality, right? Quality non-fluoridated water. You know, do you have a Berkey or a Kangen system that's supporting you in getting that like primary vital nutrient? I mean, you could go weeks potentially without food, but without water, you will pass quickly. Same goes for our other vital resource, oxygen. Are you breathing throughout the day? Are you like taking the time to just get some full breaths in. Most of us are hyperventilating throughout the day, breathing kind of shallow and not getting that like deep, long, full breath in. So water, sleep is the other one. Like, are you having a nice, quiet sleeping environment? Is it dark in your sleeping environment? Because if you're watching TV while you're sleeping, you're not getting into those deeper theta and delta states. Your brain waves will be stimulated all night long. The blue light affects the way our body is producing melatonin. And, and all your programming of everything that happens, your self-programming, your subconscious just just eats it all up because you're asleep. It's just basically whatever they turn on at night that you're watching, it's a parasite. It's a parasite. I used to date somebody that listened to like really intense and scary things in like podcasts and stuff when they were sleeping. And I was like, I can't sleep in that environment. Like listening to like horror stories while I'm sleeping. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> so yeah. really look at your environment. The other things that can be pretty easy to tackle are the toxins in your home. So one of the things I do in my practice and my clinic is I do a toxic trade-off. So we'll go into somebody's home virtually or in person when we were in person and we'll talk about the things that are potentially carcinogenic, the things that could be causing illness like air fresheners. Man, those Glade plugins, those are like the big C A N C E R word in the air, like everywhere. Get rid of those guys. Use an essential oil diffuser. 
your products that you're putting on your body and breathing in the fragrance from the dryer sheets. There are so many ways that we are aging ourselves every single day. So look at your products. You know, if you see a bunch of synthetic stuff, parabens, fragrances, um, you know, the glycol stuff like that, phthalates. I know that these are all big words and a lot to look at, but you'll see it when you start looking at products that there are brands that are like no phthalates, no parabens, no sulfites. And, and those are they on there for a reason, those labels. So look at your products in your environment, get more sleep, drink more water and breathe. I mean, those are really good baseline ways to increase your overall longevity and wellness. And then find the next level of self-care, which is... And it will come. This is the beauty of self-care, is that when you start doing that, you, your body start communicating positively with you. Just let yourself... And, you know, I like to say program yourself. Mm -hmm. It takes three weeks to establish a habit, okay? So once you do some one thing every day... For 21 days, you establish a mental pattern, okay? Your neural pathway develops for it. And you can automate a lot of things that way. So just give yourself, drink water, you know? If you cannot drink eight glasses of water, just tell yourself, you know what? I will wake up every single day and I'm going to drink a glass of water. And I will stand there for 21 days, first thing in the morning after I go use the restroom, I'm going to go and drink that water and I'll drink the whole thing and it's going to feel weird, but I will do it. At least start with that because you know what? I promise to you, you're going to feel great. You'll start noticing how wonderful you feel with just that one glass of water. Your body will get more thirsty. It will want more water, right? And the same, and, and it just becomes that, but just do one thing. Allow yourself to do one thing. You know, when I think about toxins, it is also one of those very hard things for people because, you know, people say chemicals and then the response is everything is a chemical. You are a chemical, right? And the two people, it's like, well, I don't know. It doesn't seem so bad. And it becomes this two complexity thing that they're just kind of like, maybe like next year, <laughs> you know, like, uh, so I like to say gray water safe materials because that means that that's a water that you recycle in your home for your garden and so it, then it's bio safe right so if you look at grave safe gray water safe makeup and shampoo and conditioner and your cleaning supplies you'll be surprised with the abundance of wonderful materials that are actually better right that, that are just better and, uh, and I think that's kind of like, okay, so, you know, you, you get there. I also want to talk to you about kind of integrating this, this scientist and healer inside of you and understanding that it also is important to integrate into the world and be active through the conscious marketing because we know each other through David Gonzalez, who is the internet marketing I need, to, I need to have this with, with David because he's just, you know, he's such a light. He brings so many people together. So can you talk a little bit about how, how you would advise to conscious entrepreneurs? And I think you are a conscious entrepreneur because your, your goal is to expand that awareness of the body and mind and all that. How can they start looking at the marketing and what would be a good things for them to take steps on? Because I think often we have so many healers in the uh, in America, in a world that just don't, they don't know. And it seems too complex. And then they're hidden, you know, they only make an impact in their small community and we can expand their community so much more. So what would you advise? Yeah. You know, one thing real quick is just on the habits. I have to trick myself to do these things sometimes like drinking water. I literally like force myself to have, I get bigger water bottles. I force myself to have a cup of water with me in my clinic and this and that. Um, same thing with products. Once you get a new product, you just buy that product over and over. So on that note, you know, Irina, you really said it, the, the fusion of this kind of like conscious world and marketing world. So many people I feel like have that wounded healer complex. And I know I myself had to work through so much around that because, you know, in the ancient days, when you think about it, like monks used to just give their art away, right? Like that was the way of the monk is that the community really took care of them. Everything was, um, 
you know, tended to when it came to basic necessities. And in turn, the monks provided their healing and their guidance and their insights. And unfortunately, you know, it's a little different nowadays. And what it really boils down to is recognizing one money is not evil, first of all, because I think a lot of people and I know myself, I had to go through getting over that like money is not the root of evil. Money is just an exchange of energy. Uh, Jesse Elder says money is a choice multiple stuck with me forever. Like how logical is that? It is a choice multiplier. And so when you start recognizing that everything in the world is an energetic exchange, it takes away that charge of feeling like, Ooh, like I'm selling something or I'm asking for money or I'm only about marketing or stuff like that. And you really realize that the authenticity comes when you speak your message, you know, like I'm not here like peddling holistic medicine is the only way and everyone else is wrong. I'm going, Hey, there's room for it all. And for me, the important important thing is knowing that there is science behind my medicine because now you know the western world is catching up to this 5000 year old medicine i could tell you all the nerdy science stuff about how chi is actually atp and how the body is releasing all of these neurotransmitters and endorphins when you get acupuncture and so that becomes my message right i speak to the people that are my my people, you know, my demographic. And then I'm able to share messages with them that come from my heart without it being like, I'm pressing them for marketing. But also something that I know that I've worked on a lot is making sure that I'm getting that message out there. Because if I'm not even providing an opportunity for people to know that I'm an acupuncturist, that I'm a Reiki master, that I do lifestyle counseling, if I'm not telling people that I'm doing that stuff, no one's going to know. I mean, a couple of years ago, one of my best, best friends looked at me and she goes, Diana, I know you don't want to ever be like that salesy. I always say the Mary Kay girl. I don't want to be that Mary Kay girl. It's like only hitting you up to get you to buy makeup. But she goes, you never tell people that you have all of these special magical skills that you offer. And it was such a wake up call for me because I realized not only was I like not wanting to be salesy, but then I was doing the world a disservice by not saying, Hey, if you feel called to connect with me and there's something that you think I can do to support you on your healing journey, because I'm not a healer. I'm not here to heal you. I am a guide on a healing journey. You heal yourself. Your body knows what to do. But if I'm not telling people that that opportunity to create change and transformation is available and that I'm willing to do the work, whether it's the hard work, the light work, the dark work, whatever it is, then I'm doing myself and the planet a disservice by not even saying, hey, I'm here. I have this skill. I'd love to share it with you in a really authentic way that speaks true to my voice. So, you know, you got to find that balance. You can be an abundant healing guide. You don't have to think that, you know, it's wrong to charge a reasonable rate and then start looking around you at what people are charging. No offense. I love getting my nails done and stuff like that. Yeah, the Google, right? Like what's the market price for this service? The Google will tell you right away. <laughs> right. Right. And then the comparison component of looking at what people value and spend money on. Cause I'll spend a hundred bucks on getting my nails done. So charging something like that for a healing session where we're working on constitutional physical imbalances or emotional imbalances, like, not a big deal, you know, so, so get real with yourself. Look at the ways in which you're not showing up for yourself and your business and your marketing. And then look at the ways in which the healer in you can really add that light to things, but then let go of like the old confines, of what we think it means to be in the healing space. What's amazing. I think it applies to not people that like, whether you're building technology or you're cooking food Whatever you're doing, I think it applies abroad to everybody. But for, for healers, I think it's the most. I think it also comes with that mental bias to be the oddball, to be weird, to be different. Probably some programmed messaging from being shunned by governments and entities, being burned on fires, you know, being shoved and tortured. And because the, the journey of people that, provide um, that are different right uh, especially in uh, beliefs traditional beliefs used to be extremely violent ending I like to say that um, I like to say that you know the things the way how I see the world the things that I do you know besides my financial technology blockchain space things kind of how I approach the world 
you I mean I would be burned a long time ago if it was a time when there were witches because they would just think that you know that that it's a witch because you couldn't really say well you know I even 10 years ago you would it would be not a kind of very strange thing to say and people would start completely disregarding you as nothing right if you said well I just meditated and I you know I had a lot of body experience or I did alkaline breathing and I filled my lungs with the you know with DMT or whatever sacred molecule and it was amazing and like I can do that and acti I can activate it and I don't even need anything and it's like I can connect to the source of information that sounds like a looney tunes <laughs> doesn't it? it to most people it does yeah. so yeah. I think that a lot of people that are on a journey to be a non-traditional providers of connectivity and and growth, whether it is self-growth, body growth, technology growth, they're kind of oddballs, you know. I think that we are, there's more of us now and there is traction for it. And we know because people, you know, it's, it's much easier to do business now for your space, just for your space, than it was 10, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Like, uh, you just would be like the crazy lady who is talking weird things, right? Like I was nutrition class. And now, you're cool. <laughs> and now you're cool. And I think that is an important message to you, entrepreneurs of consciousness, because now it's a cool thing. And so break the bias of this things that do not serve you anymore and do what you're here to do because you all know what you're here to do. And so that brings me to those bias. How do you break through bias? Please advise us something from the Chinese medicine, maybe that addresses that mind problem that blocks most of people. Totally. You know, resistance is one of the greatest pathways to breakthroughs. And we learn over and over and over again as we start doing that kind of deeper soul work that it's just outside of the comfort zone and maybe a little bit past that, that most growth happens. So uh, we did an exercise in a leadership training that I did where it was a bullseye. There was a middle, a center, and then an outer circle. And we all start in the middle and they would ask questions about what we're comfortable with. And we'd kind of take steps forward and back based on what this was. And it was really interesting to see people who had really vast comfort zones and people who were maybe a little bit safer with their decisions or a little bit more traditional. And so that's one of my biggest metaphors is just remembering that it's just outside of our comfort zone where growth happens. Another huge barrier to acupuncture is I'm afraid of needles. I am so afraid of needles. Right. I am. I mean, look, I was pregnant and I had to give blood and I cried okay i mean it's pretty like i'm really scared of needles and like in soviet union where i grew up you know here you go to doctor and they tell you and whatever like they're they're like shut up you know i'm, I'm over exaggerating but i actually am not i'm pretty traumatized by like russian medicine soviet union medicine the the dentist the medical the whatever it's like you know what you're supposed to feel pain like you know so needles. And that's what most people say is they think of dentists and doctors and these really kind of painful and, and dare I even say traumatizing experiences. I'm a baby. I get my blood drawn and I'm like, mommy, can I have a squeezy ball while someone hold my hand? But the truth of it is, is all it takes is experience and exposure. Because with acupuncture, the points that we use, the needles, they're literally like a couple strands of hair. Like you probably can't even see this. They're like a couple strands of hair thick. And they're so well made that they can actually bend. They're solid and not hollow, which is what we experience a lot with injectables is a hollow puncture wound. So it's really different. And then the means of the method is different as well. So the acupuncture points are typically just in the surface of the skin. I mean, barely in the surface of the skin and they're so fine. Most of the time you don't even feel them. Or when you do, it's kind of like a therapeutic sensation. It'll be like a dull ache or a throb or like, like I call them little sparkles sometimes. Like something's like activating in that little point there. And what's happening is we're working with your neurotransmitters and your electrical conduct conduction system. How do we conduct electricity? Best conductors, water and metal. And humans are made of water 
The acupuncture needles are made of surgical stainless steel. And so we're actually just adding little tags and markers so that your body can remember how to heal itself. So like I tell people when they're like, oh, I really don't like needles. It's like, okay, let's talk about this. And then I explain what I just mentioned and say, you know, we can try one in a really easy place and see how it feels. And most of the time, this, this one's a really good one. There's not a lot of nerve root bundles in this area because that's what is happening. I and mean, there are still some there, but that's what's happening is the acupuncture points are proven like you can see them on modern day imaging called cytotopography or ct scans but they use a beam of light and you can see where the acupuncture points are so this one on the arm um li 10 and 11 are really kind of mellow points most of the time so it's a great one to start with so we'll take one of the really fine needles and then most of them they're like is it in like yeah and they're like oh that's it go ahead. And then the whole bet is off. It's like, whatever. And then when you feel the therapeutic benefits, when your oxytocin is going and your endorphins are rolling and you're like, wow, this feels pretty heavenly. Like you get this kind of floaty sensation where you're in between conscious and awake and, and deep transformation and processing can happen. So usually it's just that little hurdle of that first time. And, and there are some like, they call them coded needles. They're like called sarins and stuff like that that you can use that make it even a little more painless and pain-free. And uh, most of the time the sensation is just therapeutic. So it's comfort and, and really sometimes can be a good way to like overcome those internal blockages and face our fears and then we realize well that wasn't so actually felt really good what else can I tackle and conquer in my life so it can be a great catalyst and I think that the benefits purely outweigh that internal fear factor I mean I'm gonna come I promise well I'm, I mean I'm gonna like I'm yes we have to do it and I, I appreciate that you said like look you just try and you know, you, you make a decision because it makes it to where like, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go over there and be like, actually, I changed my mind. I don't want to do it. And now you're kind of feeling awkward, right? Because for people, it's, it's a big deal. You, right. you know, it's needle and it's such a personal thing, right? Okay. That it's and There are other things to it. You know, you know, there are other modalities. So if someone came in and say, we tried that and they're like, no, I don't want, there are other things we can do to help yeah. them with acupressure and Reiki and Shiatsu and other stuff. But yeah. and so I, I've how, never had anybody do that. How does somebody source um, a professional? Because that's another thing is that there, there is, because it's not very well established yet systems, it, it, unfortunately, um, there are people that maybe come, um, you know, and not as a malice, and maybe as a malice, but, you know, the, those that are not necessarily knowledgeable and are still learning. And, yeah. you know, I'm sure that each one of us, I know I do, and I know viewers want that too. When we go for something like that, we want we want the best, right? We want to make sure that there is a certain level of, of standard and quality and understanding. You understand traditional medicine. So we can, you know, there's a, some, there's a comfort in that, right? It's not just like, oh, this is evil. This is bad. So how do people find a professional? Yeah, you know, the number, number one thing is making sure that you see a licensed acupuncturist, that they are nationally and locally licensed. We have a national accreditation board, and then there are local medical boards as well. So I take standardized examinations. I spend over a thousand hours just in clinical studies alone, not including all of the didactic studying, not including all the extra practice. That's like, you know, documented clinical hours. So number one, make sure they are a licensed acupuncturist. There are people out there who can do something called dry needling, which is technically trigger point therapy acupuncture, where you find something, this is a point called gallbladder 21. There's a really prominent trigger point in there for the trapezius muscle. And you take a needle, usually with more vigorousness, more force, a little bit more intensity. And in China, they'll do that a little bit more. It's called a stimulation technique. And you'll stimulate that needle on that trigger point to get the muscle to fasciculate, to get it to contract and relax. So um, unfortunately, uh, the most of the people who do dry needling go to a weekend seminar. So like 30 hours, 
60 hours. There are even certification programs out there for non-licensed acupuncturists where they can go and spend like a hundred hours in a fellowship. And, and then they're saying that they're acupuncturists. And I really want this medicine to be far reaching and with adequate training, I would want to share it with everybody, but I don't feel like a couple hundred hours or a weekend course, even with other medical training is enough in any means to actually administer a full on acupuncture session where you are going to get the benefits without the risks, you know, but it gives a bad reputation too, right? Because people are going and they are getting suboptimal experience and then they sharing that experience with others. And then on top of the bias, it, it makes the industry really not so awesome. Okay, two questions. One, 25 years from now, year 2045, you're looking around, seeing things. Describe your reality that you see around you. Yeah, so if we don't all upload into the cloud and <laughs> connect through blockchain technology, I guess, somehow. Um, I would imagine 25 years from now, the landscape to look a lot more progressive. You know, you were talking about how being kind of the oddball is becoming more and more accepted. Everyone's uniqueness is becoming accepted. And humans are really starting to look for what feels right, not just what they're told is right. And so I really see this evolution of humanity as creating more space for, for it all, you know, like understanding that there is a dark side and a light side, understanding that there are always different components of Western medicine and Eastern medicine and Indian medicine, Ayurvedic and things like that. So I really see a lot more growth in a collaborative effort, a lot more integration. And we're, we're starting to see that now with acupuncturists in hospitals, in cancer care facilities. Um, but, you know, I know like the bio-optimization of what they're doing with technology is really going to change the way we look at healthcare. And I'm hoping that even as we start having like bionic arms and eyes and stuff like that, that the integrity of the human form um, and, and our physical energy is still really nurtured to where something like a bioenergetic medicine like acupuncture can really still be available and, and that we don't get too far away from, from our roots, from nature. Like I'm all about innovation, all about growing into the future and optimizing what we're doing with technology but uh you know if we get too far off into the ai world we could forget that we even have bodies so well we can just so uh, you know if if we get to a point to where we have to substitute our bodies because you know we're overinflated and broken with the uh, machines and we do not use the beauty our bodies are magic we are magic everything that we see around us is beautiful we are made out of magic and the capacities of our bodies of our minds of the energy production that we can do just through manipulation of emotions alone okay creates such a such a unbelievable opportunities to where the technology i think only can win if we just give up on our health if we just degrade and we just say, oh, plug me into the chip. I'll just program what I want to think because that's all I want to think. I don't think that's the reality. That's why we have emergence of people all over the world doing and leading us to the reality that you described. That descri reality that you described is, I believe, a kind of the picture of co-creation. And so many people are consistently repeating the same things that what you just said from all over the world and consciously putting their efforts into making that reality through medicine, through technology, through arts, through all kinds of things. I think it makes it makes what you described our reality, you know, and, and so be it. Um, last question. What is the best way to get hold of you as far as are you available for people? Now, a lot of people are moving to Austin and you are in Austin, Texas. Um, kind of are you available for new clients or what, what's going on? 
Yeah, so I'm actually available both locally in Austin. My clinic is near the backside of Barton Springs, so kind of central Austin. I'm also available nationally, so I can do herbal consultation, holistic lifestyle transformation. There's a lot that can be done, especially on some of this groundwork stuff, uh, virtually on just, you know, Zoom and things like that. So lots of options. You can find me at moonmedicinemagic.com. That's M-O-O-N medicinemagic.com. You can also email me, moon medicine magic at gmail.com same thing for facebook you can find me that way and then you're also welcome to reach out diana lane um, on facebook and just send me a message where you got this so that i know where it's coming from and i'm an open book i, I love to connect with people around nerdy lifestyle healing stuff and i um, always open to just have a short chat to make sure it's a good fit so i offer a little complimentary introductory consultation so we can see if there are things we can do to support you in living your best life that's amazing i kind of didn't think the virtual of course of course it makes perfect sense so Make sure you get hold of Diana. Um, I will post links so it's much easier to, uh, to get hold of you. And we must catch up in person. You know, uh, Amazing thing about what's happening currently is that I think we got so comfortable with this, you know, with this onlineness that it's like, okay, we could drive or we could do this, but in-person connectivity is extremely important. And I think we must, con we must dedicate ourselves to making sure that we do uh, keep the social intelligence and emotional intelligence, and that can only be done through personal interactions. So luckily, Diana, we live in Texas, which is a, one of the states that values your personal freedom. And so our governor is doing a great job Good job, Governor of Texas, with making sure to find a ways to roll things back to ability to socially interact and, you know, and not canceling Halloween. Do not cancel Halloween. If you're a government that cancel Halloween, you know, I have big questions for you. You will not see me living in your state. No, thank you. The saying, okay? You know what my daughter said? And this is, uh, this is off topic. She said they canceled Halloween. Well, if they cancel Halloween, they might as well can cancel Christmas. Just cancel all parties. What are they thinking there? And 2020 is canceled. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, and what are we waiting for? Future? You know, future never comes, people. Never, okay? You live in a now moment. Because 2021, not necessarily going to be better. And this could be the best times of your life. Look around. You're around with your family. Look, you have connectivity. We can talk to each other. Start looking at the things in a positive way, just like Michelle advised you yesterday. Anyhow, I go back to, to the center. Um, such a pleasure to see you. I'll post the links. Thank you so much. Um, I, I know you viewers will love this. And when you come to Austin, we'll hang out. We'll hang out at an internet marketing party with David and all the wonderful people that he gathers up around. And if you want to become conscious entrepreneur, come to these parties, you know, join online for now because the, you guys are so welcoming. You know, I feel like I came in, I met you and I feel like a family right away, you know, you, and it, and it's, this Austin community, your community is so beautiful and so welcoming and so loving. And there's no odd balls in that community. <laughs> We're all odd balls here. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> and you can be normal too. That's all right as well. <laughs> well it's like normal. What is that? Right. So, philosophical, whatever. Everybody is unique and beautiful. And the more unique and beautiful you can be and share it with the world, the more I think you shine. Agree. And drink water. <laughs> yeah, drink water. Do the thing, the morning thing. It's, you know, and oh, I just want to add something, you know. We say about all these things and it's hard. It's always hard. It takes an effort. I fall off on and off the drinking water bag and all the time, right? I'll, I'll concentrate and drink really good amount of water and I feel amazing. But then like I'll drink some tea and whatever and I'm doing and I'm, you know, and, and so we live in a balance. It's not a strict thing. Just make an effort right now. Decide right now to get up, go drink water. And that's all. 
do that for yourself. And then next time you remember, just be like, I'm going to do it. And then do it. And then sometimes you'll forget it. Don't blame yourself. Just do it. I love it.